Uh, Janae, to that end, what, what Phillips says, there are bad black people coming to get you. I mean, this is exposed because of the race of the officers involved. The culture of violence, the culture of anti-blackness that is embedded in the structure of policing and specifically in these anti-crime units. Um, how do we tackle this problem? I and mean, what does the conversation need to begin to be inside policing units and in a city like Memphis, where there was very much a dialogue about how to better involve the community, about what criminal justice reform might look like, about what policing should look like? Yeah, that's an excellent question. And, and I want to take a moment just to extend my condolences to the Nichols family this evening on the eve of the funeral of Tyree Nichols. I can only imagine the anguish and excruciating pain that they're experiencing. But this does give us an opportunity to re-examine the investments of public safety and to think about what do we actually need police for? And if you really are logical about that question, if you think about what supposedly happened this night with Tyree Nichols, an alleged traffic stop, we don't need a gang, and that's what they were, a gang of officers ripping him out of his car, tasing him, beating him, chasing him down over an alleged traffic violation. It's, it's not lost on me that this happened in Memphis, which is the site of a case that uh, the Legal Defense Fund won in 1985 about fleeing felons, which established that you cannot use deadly force against a fleeing felon if that felon is posing no danger. In this case, we have a fully innocent man, as far as we know. There is nothing to suggest that Tyree Nichols was engaged in anything other than an attempt to get home safely. And instead, he was interrupted by a gang of police officers who seemed intent on wreaking havoc on this young man for no apparent reason. And so we have to ask ourselves the question, do we need police pulling over everyday citizens for any reason whatsoever? We don't. Do we need police returning uh, going to people to check on wellness, armed police. Do we need police intervening when there's a mental health crisis? We don't. What we need are alternative responders, people who are trained in social services, people who are trained in behavioral science, people who can actually help, who can actually protect and serve, not harass, not ultimately, in the most egregious instances, kill. Janae, I got to ask you, you know, we, it's not just obviously Memphis that has a Scorpion unit. There are similar units in New York City. They, they just sort of revamped theirs. It's called Give, which sounds nice. Uh, there's one in Georgia. There's Fulton County. There's Baltimore. I mean, do you think the death of Tyree Nichols is going to prompt a real soul searching about the necessity of thing, these things? Or do you think each city sort of tells itself a different story about what's happening? Well, it absolutely should. And it's quite disheartening to hear that Governor Hochul in New York is considering expanding these types of units in the state. That is absolutely the wrong thing to do. That is the wrong direction to go in. We should be reducing the footprint of police in our society overall, not expanding them and certainly not funding and deputizing these specialized units that operate outside the bounds of general oversight and authority that um, most police units and police, regular police officers uh, have to adhere to. These units are invited to infiltrate communities in ways that are extraordinarily dangerous to them and those people. And I will say that what's particularly uh, pernicious about these specialized units is that they are deployed in the most under-resourced communities yes. as Phil just said, and ones that are relatively defensive because of that, that have the least amount of uh, capacity and ability to report the injustices that they experience, to rally the resources to push back against this violence and against this terrorism visited upon them by the state. And that makes it easy, right? You can get an easy win against a vulnerable community. If you were to take that same specialized unit and bring it to a different community, a more resourced and, and wealthy community, you would never see the same results that you see here. Those units would be disbanded immediately. Mm -hmm. You only see them in the communities that are already suffering and already vulnerable. And we have to examine this predatory policing that is at, at the end of the day, the foundation of our policing system overall.
Yeah, I will say cell phone footage and body cam footage are not substitutes for the resources these communities need to report injustices, right? We may know about Tyree that's Nichols right. because of body cam footage, but that's not a substitute for what should actually happen in the community to prevent this from ever happening again.